Hey TCS viewers, it's Chris Nichols here again from the camera store and I think today we're going to take a nice walk along the river here, check out some of the events going on in Calgary and we're going to do it with the brand new Nikon D750. Now I know what you're thinking, Nikon already has a ton of full frame cameras so today we're going to shoot this camera, we're going to explore its features, we're going to find out where does this camera fit in the whole Nikon lineup of full frame cameras. So should be fun, it's a beautiful day for a change, come with me and let's find out. So here's one of the big questions, you know, with the D750, what cameras does it replace? Where does it fit? And what is it really upgrading? Now, I think a lot of people are going to think, well, with the name 750, this is maybe a natural upgrade for the D700 camera, but I think we should let the D700 alone. I mean, that was a full frame for low light, and we're beyond that now. To me, still, this seems more like a natural progression of the D610 camera, and I say that because we're still at 24 megapixels, but it is a slightly new sensor, modified and different from the 610s. But you know, it's basically doing what the 810 did for the 800 series. Similar kind of feel and look, but we're now getting some nice new upgrades. Better battery life, new body design, faster shooting, uh, and a better autofocusing system. We're gonna talk about all that. But at the same time, you can't help but think that this camera is actually a lot like a D810, except with 24 megapixels. So if you're a 610 user, do you want to upgrade? I don't know. I mean, don't feel too raw about the fact that this camera's come out. It's just the way technology is. You always have new stuff. And if you're a D810 user who wanted the faster autofocusing but never needed the 36 megapixels, well, I guess you could argue you should have waited for this camera too. But anyways, let's go out, try it out, and see if there is something unique and different about this camera, or is it just a natural progression? Seven fifty, yeah. <laughs> So, TCS viewers, this is a first on our channel. I just got stung by a wasp. In fact, right on my shooting hand, this would be awesome. It's actually Chris Nichols first, because I don't think I've ever been stung by us before. So if I start to like look puffy on camera, uh, you guys let me know days later after the video is edited. But I might need, I might need help. But uh, we'll keep shooting, I'll tough through it, and we'll try to get some shots here. All right, now of course I've been saying that this camera is actually very close to a D810 in a lot of ways. And uh, one of the main ways is the viewfinder. I mean, looking through this thing, it's big and it's bright. We've got the OLED display inside now. But you know, when I look through this or the A10, the magnification, uh, the viewfinder, it's all very similar. I'm not seeing much difference, even though the A10 has the you know round eyepiece and it's got larger prism. So that's poignant. I'm gonna take a picture of it as some sort of attempt uh, at a cathartic uh, overcoming of my fears that I've now just been traumatized with. Uh, I'm gonna take a picture of it, but it's still too soon. I'm shooting a nice difficult scene here. We've got a lot of bright sky, we've got the foreground here in the shade, and uh, it just reminds me of a point we've got to make here, guys. Of course, all the photos that we're doing today are going to be JPEGs, or they're going to be RAWs, processed in camera. Of course, we don't have support for the RAW files yet. Now, what Nikon's saying about this new sensor is that it's going to be you know, basically the same resolution. We still do have an aliasing filter in front, just like the 610, but we should get slightly better low light performance. We're going to check that out, and I expect dynamic range is still going to be excellent. Now there are some interesting changes to the D750 in the body design. First off, a bigger, deeper grip, and that's working very well for these cameras. Everybody who's held it so far has really enjoyed that deeper grip. Now the weight is a little bit less than an 810, but it certainly feels beefier than a D610. It is still a plastic body, but Nikon is advertising this ultra fancy carbon fiber reinforced thermal plastic, whatever that means. Suffice to say though, the body does feel strong. It is weather sealed well. An interesting side note here, the D750 is the first full frame Nikon camera to have Wi-Fi incorporated in the body. And we're kind of thinking that maybe that's why they stuck with a plastic body. We know that Canon was having some issues with getting Wi-Fi to work with metal bodies. So maybe this is Nikon's way of getting past that, a reinforced body, but still plastic to give us that Wi-Fi capability. 
It's nice to have that camera remote capability from apps on our phone and have that Wi-Fi transfer in. So overall, a very welcome feature on this new Pro SLR. Now today I'm shooting mostly with the 24 to 120 f4, which I've always liked as a lens, and it's a good general purpose walk around lens for what we're doing today, nice and sharp. And uh, it's interesting because the D750 is actually gonna be released on the market with this lens as a kit, a lot like what Canon did with their 5D series. And of course that did very well for them. Now, uh, just some food for thought. If I was to buy a D610 and a 24 to 120 brand new, or I was to buy the D750 with the 24 to 120 kit, this would only cost me a couple extra hundred bucks. So it is nice value for that. Uh, if you're looking at buying a D610 and a 24 to 120, don't do it. One of the things you're gonna notice right away, we've got this nice, beautiful screen. It's huge, we're well over 1.2 million dots, so very, very nice to look at. And of course, the new feature, rotation. Really, really nice. I'm enjoying that now, the more I shoot mirrorless cameras and whatnot, you can even flip it almost uh, for a selfie, kinda. A selfie of your lower extremities anyways. But uh, you know, it's very easy to use, and another thing that I'm really digging about it, this new info display. I mean, it's the same kind of thing that they've always had, but they've changed the look. It's more monochromatic, it's very smart, and it's very clear to read. All right, so let's take a look at the low light performance on the D750. Now we've got a new sensor, and you know, the processor's been tweaked for it, and so we're expecting better low light performance, and what we are seeing is very impressive. I mean, we're getting up to these high ISOs, 3200, 6400, 12800, still very, very usable, nice sharp results. Uh, now Nikon said a stop better than the D610. I don't know if we could go quite that far, but certainly it's very close to the D810, maybe even slightly better. This D750 is gonna be an excellent performer for journalistic activities like we thought it would. So once again, we've got the dual SD card slot here. Again, another indication that this is not a 700 replacement. Let's just forget about the 700. You know, as I'm handling this camera too, it's just kind of striking me with all the features that we've been playing with and using the camera, the grip, the handling. I'm actually really enjoying using this. I know that the 810's got the megapixel count. It's always gonna have the megapixel count, but 24 is plenty. And I'm starting to think that this camera really is hitting a sweet spot for an overall camera. It's a real nice camera to use. All right, so I like this flower here and getting shots of it. Again, something like this with all this detail really plays to the strength of a high resolution full frame camera. 24 megapixels is plenty. In fact, I still think that's a better overall megapixel count than uh, 36 on a D810. But of course, one thing that we still do have here is the aliasing filter. And I guess we just don't have the technology yet at this point to get rid of it on a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. But uh, that's something we'd still hope for in the future. But even still, you know, looking at these files, guys, you get oodles of information, tons of detail, and I'm sure very big enlargements. All right, guys, so just a quick jaunt over to the Beakerhead Catapult Contest here, just to get some action shots, you know, test out the frame rate and buffer on the 750. Let's get in there and do some shots. Now before we get into the results on the speed of this camera, just keep in mind that it was rumored that the D750 was gonna be this ultra fast sport camera beast, eight frames per second and so on. Didn't quite make it there, but still, six and a half frames per second. As you can see here, it's a nice quick shooting rate. It's certainly gonna help out for wedding shooters and any sort of kids and sports. It's gonna do a good job. Buffer life is also about 50% greater than the D610. So of course, we're not gonna reach the 810 levels and we're not gonna compete with D4s or anything like that. But overall guys, couple this with the 51 point focusing, that group focusing system and a better buffer and shooting speed and you've got a nice quick camera. You're gonna like this for journalism, sports, anything this camera's intended for. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video guy, to talk about the D750's video features. And I was never really a big fan of Nikon's DSLR video capabilities until the D810 came out. That was a big step in the right direction. They added 60p recording and they put in a flat profile and I was surprised by how flexible it is. That's carried over to the D750. You've got that slow motion recording and that same flat profile. You can see some footage here. It's great how you can add a little more contrast to it, apply some saturation. You can really play with the image. It opens up a lot of 
the creative possibilities in post. The other thing that differentiates it from the 810 is they actually added a tilt screen, which is wonderful when you're shooting video. And as well, unlike the D610, you don't have to kick out a live view to set your aperture. You can adjust it on the fly, just like the D810 and D4S. You're going to see that update in real time. It's a nice improvement. In terms of the image quality, I'd say the 750 is actually the best of the Nikons right now. And I think that's because of that lower 24 megapixel sensor. We get the same sharpness as the 810, but we don't have the same moiré and aliasing. I actually wasn't able to get any moiré with this camera. As well, the low light is a bit better. We did this ISO ramp up at our vodka party because that's what you should do at a party is camera tests. And you can see from 800 up to 25,600, it's quite good. I'd say it's usable up to 6400, and that is an improvement over the D810. Now, the only limitation of this guy, it's still shooting the same codec, just an 8-bit H.264 file. I'd love to see Nikon do something like take Sony's XAVC codec. They're already using Sony's sensors. It'd be great if they could use their codecs as well. But you know what? Overall, I'd say this is the most capable DSLR on the market for video right now. I'd even put it above a Canon 5D Mark III. You get the 60p and you get sharper video. So if you're still into DSLR video, don't want to go mirrorless, this is the way to go. All right, so we've had a nice day with the D750 here, and let's get back to answering then our original question, where does this camera fit? You know, in a lot of ways, the D750 has the D810's capabilities. We're getting the same autofocus, we're getting the extra battery life, very similar movie mode. In some other ways, it actually feels a little bit more refined, like the new menu systems, the button placement. I like all of these controls. It's a very logical, very easy to use Nikon, but still familiar to those users. We're getting 24 megapixels, but honestly, that's really the only thing that's borrowed from the D610. It's faster, so I'm going to go ahead and say something maybe a little bit more radical. I think the D750 sits out on its own. At first, I was thinking this is a 610 killer. It's an upgrade for that camera. But really, this is a brand new Nikon. It has some features that uh, D810 users might be desiring. I think the 750 is a very exciting camera. Look for it coming out. It's going to be in stores soon. Thanks very much for joining us, guys. We'll see you soon. If you're still into DSLR video, don't want to go mirrorless, this is the way to go. Oh!